of getting passed by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So you are in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting uh, with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani. Not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari, mate, with something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and up front, he's dropped him all the way down at the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Verani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Pike's pushed more and far and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike could have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's still such trouble. He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Yeah, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now.
Does he have it? Oh, they're going to Thomas and Gavin got it. He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like Trump. He's not just second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's going to do it. Big Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the BSC Season 10 Spring Season Round 7 from Richmond Raceway. I am Jace Parfit. I'm going to be joined in the booth by Mr. Kenton Sport at once more. Welcome in. If you are here, thank you very much for joining us. Let's give you a bit of a rundown on Richmond itself. Three quarter oval. D-shaped oval with the width of 60 feet with a 10-foot apron. Banking 40 degrees in the turns, 8 degrees at the starting line. 2 degrees on the 860-foot back stretch. It's going to be an interesting one. There is a poll up in chat of between plus 5 and minus 5 cautions. Let's see. How you get on, but I can give a quick rundown of the championship standings. And at the moment, it is Andrew Williams out in front by six points over Alex Witt with Dylan Critz in second down. Michael Cody Kern, Joshua B. Keith, Jason B. Taylor, Christian Strada, Noel Jackowitz, Devin Collicott, Andrew Jamalin, Trenton Kimmel, Nicholas Stockner, Andrew Burrell, and Matthew Norberg. And that is the first half of the championship standings don't forget as well guys you can get yourself down to richmond if you want to this um well it's coming on the 31st of march so this coming weekend you can get yourself down to the toyota owners 400 if you want to have a go and do go and watch some racing at richmond you can but let's bring kenton into the booth good evening dear sir to you how are you I'm doing well. Starting to thaw a little bit. Um, where I'm at, we we got a, about 40 centimeters of snow in the last week. Because, um, you know, spring is here. Apparently not. Uh, <laughs> it's been a little little uh, chilly down here for a little while, but uh, we're starting to thaw out just a bit. Well, I will like to inform you that technically, uh, according to my season's calendar that I was looking at the other day winter doesn't actually finish till the um end of march i believe if i'm not yeah, mistaken usually the last weekend yeah is the first uh something like that i can't remember exactly what oh it is. i can't remember well apparently it's already finished it was on the 20th of march we have winter ending but um yeah the temperatures in the uk kind of feel like it still is but then again, I'm in the UK, so let's be I mean, careful. Yeah. It's winter all year round. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's bring you up the calendar. You can see we're at Richmond this week. We have got 120 laps, stage break at 50, three sets of tyres. Rounding out the spring season, we go to Martinsville, Texas, Dega, Dover, and we finish the season at Kansas Speedway. That's going to be an interesting run in there, Kenton, isn't it? Very interesting circuits. Next week, we go to Martinsville. Yeah, Martinsville, nice uh, short track before heading to Texas once again after we were just in Coda and then, you know, a couple, uh, what is it, Dega and Dover. The, the Oh, never mind. I was going to say something else, but we'll avoid that one because we don't need to start our clippings this early in the stream. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, the, yeah, double Dega, Do the double Ds. The double Ds, Dega and Dover. Uh, as uh, and then you know finishing it up with uh, a nice easy fun one which I'm excited about uh, but yeah good good set to finish this guy off I know I think Pinoka is to start season two that one did get postponed due to the Tempest update uh, for iRacing so still no rain on NASCAR no no to be fair NASCAR doesn't run in rain anyway light sprinkle and they're like oh my gosh rain they're yeah, like the NBA. Can... Actually, no. They're like the soccer players of the motorsports world. Oh, Slightly God. uncomfortable spacing and immediately shut it down. 
I'd like to point out that the women's game is a lot harder than the men's. You know what I mean? They don't, yes. You know, I, I can agree a, with that. I watched a video the other day of a woman who had dislocated her knee. She popped out her kneecap and was sat on the side of the football pitch, smacking it back into place. And if that was yeah, a man, women's... they would have been shot. Oh, yeah. No, no. They... Um... He'd still be rolling, actually. Yes. Um, he would have just rolled his way back to the hospital somehow. Uh, yeah, uh, it's yeah, men's professional soccer. I will specify professional soccer um, is uh, what's this? Loppier than magic carp on the on uh, on the middle of a road. Yes, it's, it's awful. Yeah, I do agree with you there as well. Thank you so much. If you have joined us, we are into qualifying. And at the moment, Dan Michelle is on the top on a 2173. They gave me free reign on the name of the race circuit this week. So I put hi ho back to ovals we go. Um, due to the fact that, you know, we ended up at Kota last week. Um, <laughs> well, Your favorite. No, it was not. Give over. It's horrible. Um, Dan Michelle was your winner at Kota with Alex Witt and Dylan Chris in second. Now, the one of the things, right, we were talking about my achievement of leading my division in iRacing in trucks, right, after Bristol. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't run Kota last week, but I thought I'd go out and give it a little test. So I did. The worst thing I probably should have done, shouldn't have done, is watch the truck race from Kota last weekend, right? And... Um, I thought, oh, they're taking a massive load of off tracks. You know what I mean? They're not even running at some points on the circuit. So I thought I'd have a go at um, at Kota with Inai Racing, running the, the, the line as close as I could get to what they were doing. Obviously, they're professionals. I just suck. But um, I did end up, I did one lap, and I finished off with 12 off tracks after one lap, doing near enough to what they were doing. Now, my complaint on that one would be, if you're going to stick a road circuit on the calendar, please lighten up with the off tracks. Because I did watch the Cup Series there, and the guy, the commentator, did turn around and go, oh, they're only accounting off tracks between lap three and lap, uh, for, between turn three and turn six, which is down through the S's. Everywhere else is fair game. I wish iRacing would do the same thing. If you're going to stick a road circuit on a truck calendar, Give me the same blinking rights that they do in real life, will you? Because there is no way I can tighten up that corner in a truck. I am not an F1 car, but let's bring you up the grid after qualifying. We've got 29 people on there. Dan Michelle is in first. Dylan Critt second. Jason Taylor third. Devin Collicott, Christian Strada, Nicholas Stockner, Alex Witt, Brandon McClutland, Cody Kern, Matthew Norberg, Clint Holterman is new into the series season this week. Andrew Williams is your top 12. On from that, Terry Murphy, Calvin Ross, Joshua Kuhn, Noel Jackowitz, Hunter Carlson, TJ Spainauer, Andrew Onquist, Trenton Kimmel, Bradley Young, Hunter Cole, Armour Bruso, Andrew Jamalin, Anthony Radel, Seth Pegg, Joshua B. Keith, Anthony Burrow, and Greg Sherman. I thought um, iRacing was a bit harsh on off-tracks at Kota, especially when you're in the trucks. Uh, they are, and it's, it's funny because a lot of these tracks no matter what uh you're racing there the off tracks and track limits throughout the entirety of it stay the exact same that's ridiculous um, it, yeah so like whatever you would have to use like even i mean it's even the same for some of the gt cars uh, i know some corners under gt on the gt3s you normally can go so much wider but mm. because of you know that tracks used for this that and the next thing you can't um it's really annoying but uh, yeah I agree. No, I, I literally agree with you. It was ridiculous. You know, I was trying that very wide line where they were coming out of one of the corners and literally going about 10 meters to the right of the curb um, to try and get the truck rotated because, you know, we can't do a 90 degree hairpin in a blinking truck. It just ain't even possible without me. At one point, I even ended up in first gear. First gear to try and get that truck rotated. And I. Well, yeah, I didn't run Kota and officials this week. So, unfortunately, I've lost my championship lead. But I'm, I'm heading back there this week as well. Back back to the trucks I go on my mission to win my, well, division, which is really quite low anyway. But, you know, look, it's, it, it's an achievement for me, should we say, as we're off to Chicagoland Speedway this week. 
in the truck. Mm. So uh, keep an eye out on that one. Um, Pace Lap, Dan Michelle, Dylan Quitz, Jason Taylor, Davin Collicott, Christian Strada. I'm going to close the votes of plus five or under five because at the end of the day, we are up and running. Plus five, have it. 84% plus five votes here this evening. Yeah, I'm not uh, not surprised there. It's uh, we were chatting in the green room about this track, and uh, it's known for its contact around the, the course. Before so, we get going, really quickly, would... what was the first line you read? We've got about ten seconds. Oh, first line I read is uh, da, 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 da. Richmond. The tracks, racing grooves, and proclivity for contact make Richmond a favorite among NASCAR drivers and fans. So basically, get ready to crash. Everyone loves it. Well, there you go. Uh, good luck, TJ and Brad, says Mr. Spain, our senior sir. Welcome in. Salute. Um, is TJ running the Kelly car? No. I don't think so. No, I, don't, no, I think no. he's in the busy beat. Yeah, he's in the, uh, yeah. yeah. There he is. They both are. Both are, yeah. Oh, they're course. right beside each other, too. I have reset the, the trading paints quite a few times um, because I did see Seth Pegg, who, as we said, has got a different livery. We have got a Twitch theme livery for Mr. Pegg this for week. Um, I believe it's for his Twitch channel too. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I didn't even know he had one, but yeah, apparently he has. Um, so there it is, Twitch Mr. Seth Peg. But the pace car lights are out. We're going to be up and running once more. And now we get Richmond underway. It's green, green, green racing here as they head round two wide, two columns, and let's see what goes on as we get up and running. Yeah, we're, uh, we won't be staying too wide all the way through, although we are now three wide a little further back there as uh, Alex Witt and Strada um, get nice and snugly in with uh, Jason Taylor there. Um, which, uh, I mean, thankfully, it is a wider track, as you talked about. It is 60 meters uh, across, so three solid lanes that you can actually fit a car in. So it makes life a little easier trying to make these moves. Oh, that does not, not look good. That does not. Um, oh, then he takes a. Oh, T, how did you not see it, for, Brad? <laughs> I think he was stopping. There's skid mark coming behind him, but who knows? Um, on that. Um, all right, well, that we made it three laps. Woo. There it is. There's so the initial contact. Bounced off the wall. Yeah, the 41 of Jason Taylor. And here comes Brad, just goes and bumps both of them. So, that lasted long. Yeah, um, I think yeah, he just got a little loose on that corner. Unfortunately, contact to the wall, and I find with these cup cars, they're very odd in that you kind of stick to the wall until you no longer stick to the wall, and then instantly you're going down across the track. Like it's not even mm. there's. It's hard to keep it once you get off the wall. It just kind of spits you right across. So rather unfortunate. And these corners are kind of odd. It, it doesn't look like it. Um, you know, and when you're looking at the track as a whole, but you can kind of see it when you look at the track map there, uh, sort of right after the end of the corners um, coming onto that back stretch, because of how straight it goes, these corners kind of come to a point almost. It's very odd. Um, it's not like it's almost more of a true D shape compared to what we typically see for these uh, tri ovals and stuff, because it does kind of hit that point section hmm. um, a little bit as they come through the corners okay what have we got to do here tell us what we've got to do to prevent us ending up with absolute shed load of caution uh the biggest thing is just i mean outside of keep it clean but it's staying off those walls and then I'd say I want to say not trying to make too many moves, but that seems obvious. Like you don't want to try and force moves. Basically, like if you're able to make a move happen, good on you. But they, it it is a trickier track to make a move um, stick. Uh, this is one of those tracks where you're gonna make a pass and you're gonna make that move after this corner on that straightaway by getting a better exit than you are diving underneath and trying to basically you know the um, dive bomb a car into the corner you're gonna have a much easier time coming out of that corner with a better exit and taking off from there 
to get that pass done uh, opposed to trying to make it happen in a corner it's just it, you, the amount of speed you can carry in these corners is not quite as much as you think it is a little trickier because how uh, the corners are shaped and they're not super banked so it's kind of hard to kind of hold that speed super uh, super high uh, you know, compared to like the 18s and 19s and up into the you know higher 20s that we usually see at some of those faster motor uh, speedways, um, but your your move is going to definitely be smoother and stronger on the back stretch and coming in out of the first corner than into a corner. Uh, okay, well there you go. To more insight from our very own Mr. Sports Out, we are going to be up and running. We are now going to be going once more. It's green, green, green here at Richmond. These guys set off down Michelle still out in front. Devon Collicott in second there behind him. And Alex Witt is down in fourth at the moment as Collicott and Cord as, uh, Dylan Critz go side by side. Lydia, go TJ, love, and I don't know what that is, cafe. Brad and Sizemore and Peggles just goes to go breakfast club. So Seth Pegg there on the breakfast club mission once again. But it is Dan Michelle out in front. TJ Spain are back here in the mix. Peggles also as well up in 14th at the moment. Doing a good job, Seth. Yeah, Seth having a fantastic I, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of dig the purple. It's a nice purple. It's just a shame it's got Twitch blasted all over it. Um, yeah, <laughs> Yep. I mean, self selfish plug, right? Got to every once in a while, you just got to throw yourself a little bit of a bone. Yeah, if I even knew what his Twitch was, <laughs> I'd promote him, but I don't have a clue what it is. Um, I'm probably I think it's actually it's just Peggles, Peggles, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. probably Peggles. I think it actually is just Peggles. Yeah, it's Peggles uh, and everything else. If I remember else. correctly. Yeah. Don't forget, guys, uh, here once more. We've got some great racing coming up. Don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells because you've got lots of racing coming up uh, here. And also, May the 5th. No, May the 4th. So, May the 4th. Keep an eye out on the JBB YouTube channel as we start off with the NASCAR 100% series kicking off here as well. And that is going to be very, very interesting indeed. So. That's a 100% Star Wars day, by the way. I know. It wasn't picked on purpose. I literally forgot that. And just basically said we're going to start on that day are you going to have a, like a, a rivals race the next day for revenge of the fifth Ooh. Hear that. <laughs> we should do put cars and trucks on the same track that'd be awesome oh multi-class multi-class <laughs> multi nascar yeah oh yeah could have trucks cup and xfinity all on the same piece of the circuit that would be absolutely amazing as these guys wander around now they've settled in single file which is what we expected would happen Devin Collicott with Alex Whip behind him we did say it's a very single file racetrack nobody is really out chance in that double file you can see on the overhead blimp shot there provided by JPB sponsored by somebody of some sort who doesn't want to put their name on it but there we go here at the scene. But you see they're all running single file it's about what we would expect here wouldn't we really single file racing all the way through here at Richmond yeah 100 percent it's more typical obviously there's a little bit of leeway you can kind of take some slightly different lines going into and out of corners the biggest thing is you've got to be careful of the cars around you because it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of auto club mm. in that you can take multiple different corners the biggest problem is always going to be where are the cars nearby because you have to know where it is and the spotters in this um in this sim aren't aren't exactly the greatest if you're not at a 90 degree angle uh to them um like if they're right beside you you'll get a readout but if you're going up and they're coming underneath you they're not going to call it out until you're already moving down <laughs> so it makes it a little tricky if you're trying to make a, a weird line into the corner uh, compared to what everybody else is doing. So, got to keep your wits about you. Yeah, definitely. I fully agree with you. And at the moment, Dan Mitchell is out in front. Dylan Critz chasing him down. They're already coming on to the back end of the pack of Joshua Kuhn. Oh, it's actually Chris Strada 
in that 29 machine. He was one of the people involved in the incident right at the beginning as well. Christian with a nice, um, well, he's got a pretty, like, gun gray livery machine this evening. Yeah, it's gun metal. It has a... There's something on the re front. It's Reese's though. Pieces. It's, uh, it's Stevie Wonder. There's a little Stevie Wonder on the back right corner. It's signed on the side. It has Stevie Wonder on it. On the rear quarter panel, there it is. Yeah, Stevie Wonder. Is there a reason for this? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I missed. Yeah, I don't know. I just saw it uh, earlier on when I was hopping in. Um, I, <laughs> I was in the stream very early today. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, joined the session very early, and I was like, oh, I'm going to bump around C, and I was like, I'm going to check out Seth's livery for this race. I'll, I'll check out, uh, you know, kind of start to bounce around, seeing if anyone had updated or tweaked liveries or anything like that. And I saw that he didn't have his bright orange, and I was like, ooh, what's this? And then, uh, is that sparks coming from Calvin Ross there? I see orange sparks coming out of the bottom of his car. Yes. Okay, it's not just me. <laughs> no, there is. It's like he does have a little bit of damage. Oh, as he hits the wall, it's it like does look like he's got a bit of damage on the tire. It's quite weird to be fair. It is. He does have a lot of front end damage. Might just get us a little snippet of what is going. Oh. There he is. oh. Oh, Brad, hold it. Calvin, hold it. Oh, that one's on Calvin. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Almost takes Brad out. <laughs> he did manage to hold it there, running out. It did, yeah, they see. So, um, well done to them guys. But I'm trying to see if it can be. Stay there, stay there. Yeah. Yes, there is. Coming out the rear, yeah. the front left. Is he dragging on the floor? The only thing I can think of is it looks like he's got some damage to the front left. Uh, bumper there on the on the bumper there there looked to be some damage and i'm thinking maybe that's scraping and it's causing it to throw up some sparks there yeah. it's very odd i have never seen that before in my life on this simulator or as you can see that his front bumper is like bumping up and down a little bit not much but just enough mm. of a tweak that it it looks like it might be actually dragging Let's go out there. Can, some, can we get past him, please? Oh, no, because he is alongside us. At the moment. That's weird. That is. Like, as you can even see the sparks coming off the, the back through, like, with, just straight off behind this car. And I'm, like, I don't know why that is. Oh, yeah, it's got a bit of damage on that front end. But it's only it under the... when he's in coming out of where is it the moment coming out of he's running down into four, isn't it? It's only on every corner banking that he basically has the spot. I think he's out. just got too much he's got just got a bunch of damage to that front left fend uh, front one bumper. And it's just dragging as it kinda hits the corner because it kinda keeps moving on him. It's weird. He's also having some troubles there. He goes around as literally we hopped off of him. He just spun it. Um, you gonna sit not there? sure if that'll bring out yellow, but... Oh, no. Nope. He's gone to the bits. Gone back to the bits <laughs> as we pick up on Clint yep. Holtman in a nice, basic, simple livery machine. Just white and with a few little things on the back. That makes it so much easier for us, sir. It's a nice little plain <laughs> white livery. Thank you so much. As these guys go battling out, coming out of two at the moment. They're just settling in right about now. Knocking off the laps here and seeing how they get on. Brad Young is down here with Armand Brusso, Christian Schrader, and Hunter Carlson as Brad's running that high line. Looking like he's struggling early on, though, Mr. Bradley Young, on them tyres on lap 30. Yeah, tyres are going to be uh, an important one for this. Uh, 100%. And it's obviously be the size of the track. We we know the shorter the tracks get, the more the tires are likely to wear. Um, it's also asphalt. Oh, I think a lot of people's tires are starting to die because we're seeing a little little bit of sliding out of people right now. Mm. Um, now back end getting a little little loose and kind of dragging them across in there. 
losing out on that. So obviously not what you want to be doing too, too much. Uh, the walls usually don't uh, lend themselves to being faster. Um, Martinsville, Justine, run around the wall. Got a place in the final. I mean, I feel like, didn't they fix that in this game too? They made it yeah, so you can't you do that. Yeah, made it so you can't do it. They did it in yeah. breaking everything since Justine did it, isn't it? You know what I mean? They made the, yeah. the, the rule, I, I live by a rule, um, one of my many rules, mind you. Uh, to be fair, I don't know. One of the rules is obviously to find a solution, you have to create a problem. And obviously that day at Martin's well, Chastain created a problem. And they then come back and said, well, that's it. No, nobody else is allowed to do that. Now for me, I thought it was a great move. And I would try, I can't remember who, I think it was either this series or Triple Bypass where we tried to get somebody to run around the wall to see what would happen. Um, and unfortunately, it was blocked before the broadcast actually went live. So they wouldn't even allow them to do that either. Which is funny because you still, like, if you do it accidentally, it actually kind of still works. Mm. But if you purposefully try and do it, it doesn't work. It makes no sense. <laughs> the, the problem is, is how accidentally can you run a car round the wall at Martinsville as we watch Wit under pressure from Collicott with Holtman and Branham Clockley tucked up here. These four, the leaders are starting to go, unfortunately, put laps on people. Brad Young is lap Sherman. Hunter Cole is lap. Andrew Burrell is lapped. Calvin Ross is, I think he's had enough for today already. And Joshua Kuhn is lapped there as well. So the leader's starting to come through to the lap cars here. Brad, uh, Brad, sorry, Kenan. Um, so not, uh, <laughs> they're lapping him already on lap 37. Yeah, I, I think uh, if I if I saw this correctly, I think Josh the Joshua Kuhn actually is not driving anymore. Uh, it sounds like he had a issue with his headset uh, for his VR dying right as the race was about to go live here. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think he's actually no, he's not. in the race anymore. Yeah, and then Ross just left after that spin. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, it's short track racing. You're immediately going to start lapping people really early on, which is unfortunate. Um, but also, it's NASCAR. The, the very minimum we've got uh, was a stage break, I think. Is that 50. lap? Is it 50? Okay, 50. I was say it's either 50 or 60. I can't remember. Um, and uh, obviously, that'll allow someone to gain a lap back with, uh, with the lucky dog. And then if you decide not to pit, and everyone else does, which will most likely happen, especially, I mean, 10 laps to go, we should make it pretty close to, for most of these guys. Um, that'll allow you to kind of unlap yourselves as well. So there are a few options to kind of get it back. So obviously with it being this early in the race, it's not the end all be all uh, of being in first or second or anything like that. There's lots of time to go. And we've talked about it Multiple times. many, uh, yeah, <laughs> it never is important to be in first in NASCAR because the whole thing can change super, super fast. I think that was the thing for us when we were talking about it, wasn't it? We, we were sitting here saying that, you know, at the end of the day, you, you, you don't need to worry about where you are at the beginning to worry about where you are in the final 10 laps. And, uh, and I think it's just relevant across the board. You need to make sure you're in and around the front with about 10 to go. We've got nine to go here. And as you can see, stage break's coming up. And at the moment, Dan Michelle's going to get the full 10. Critz in second, Witz in third, Holtman and Collicott, McLaughlin, Stockman, Norbert, Williams, and Jakowitz. There you can see Brusso is also a lap down. Our very own one, Mr. Armand Brusso, being a lap down. Terry Murphy and Christian Strada have been running side by side. Strada's got the inside line at the moment. And Seth Pegg is trying to get away from Joshua B. Keith and chase down the TJ Spain hour here this evening as we're on lap 43. Don't forget stage break at 50. If you are here, guys, say hi. Don't forget, we do answer back, I promise you. And as Clint Altman is going side by side with Alex Weir, unfortunately for Bradley Young, he's stuck between the rock and a hard place here, Kevin. Do you go high? Do you go low? Do you go nowhere? And hope they can make it past. Uh, at this point, for that specific situation, a default to road, being lapped on the roads, be predictable, 
just do what you want, like you need to do or what you're usually doing. Don't try and adjust and make change things and stuff, especially when you have a multitude of cars coming by you at once. Stay predictable <laughs> and, and just run your line. The faster cars will figure it out after that. Um, the biggest thing I have, I have learned with road racing, especially as uh, I've recently delved into IMSA finally, and I prefer GT3 cars, and uh, biggest thing, yeah, stay as predictable as you can. It's amazing, all See. the Americans I talk to heading over to road, and there's me little old Englishman here, heading over to NASCAR trucks. I have just got this thing about trucks, and I, I have no idea why. I can seem to get them to work better than I can the Cup and Xfinity, and if that 91 is not careful there, Mr. Collicott, you are going to put whip round and it's not going to be happy. You're running in hot no. every single corner and you've nearly bumped him twice. And at one point, he was a little bit squirrely. So you might want to ease up there, Mr. Collicott, the uh, young Canadian there, Kenton. What is it about Canadians? Um, oh, because, man. Uh, because otherwise, he's going to put whip round. I mean... We're not actually as nice as people think we are. We're just more polite about when we're being mean. Um, <laughs> that's the biggest difference. Uh, what's uh, the the ongoing joke right now is uh, in Canada they're known as the Geneva checklist instead of conventions because um, uh, Canada in World War One was basically the reason the Geneva Convention existed. Um, Go us, yay. <laughs> yay. Some <laughs> Kenneth coming in with some what? rather, I don't know, knowledgeable information here as we're on lap 49 and we've started it off. What's going to happen once again? Is it going to be coming to the end of the stage? It is. The stage is going to be flying at the end of this. Dan Michael's going to get it. He has got it there. Stage break at 50. Dan Michael takes the win. Uh, Dan Michelle, sorry. Dylan Critz got second. And then I believe it was, I know, Haltman got second, Chris got third, Wick got fourth, and Collicott got fifth place there. So great job from Dan. We'll have a chat with him very, very shortly. We'll give him a minute because I don't know if he's going to be going into the pits here. I think everybody would, though, wouldn't they, really, in conjunction? Oh, well, more than likely, everyone's going to be heading into the pits pretty fast. Uh, it looks like Calvin Ross's actual steering wheel, like his own steering wheel, broke. Um, and that is why he is no longer on track. Oh, man. Come talk to so, us. Yeah. We'll give Dan a minute to get into the booth here. And then we'll have a chat with your stage one winner, Mr. Dan Michel. Los Angeles, California. Yeah, we... we learn as we go, right? No, oh, yeah. I I always forget how long this pit mm. or, uh, this pit box is too. All right, let's bring him in, <laughs> Any... Mr. Dan Michelle, your stage one winner. Dan, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. How are you, bud? Uh, a little frustrated. A little frustrated, but good. Why are you frustrated, mate? Tell me. Uh, I mean, I, I was doing pretty good. I was able to win the stage and everything, but those lap cars at the end started fighting each other and then not realizing, I guess, that I was there and then had a bunch of contact with them because I was just unaware. It is what it is, but... Always going to happen on short know, track, though, Dan, isn't it? Stage win, yes, yeah, stage win, but it's always going to happen on short tracks. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be that... They're wrecking next to the leader every time, but contact will happen, yeah. It will happen, Dan. But look, you've taken 10 points in the stage win. Gives you a nice little boost there in the championship, sitting in fourth at the moment. What do we think? We haven't got many rounds left here, Dan. Are you going to take the spring season win? No. No, no, no. I, uh, Why? I've had too many rough starts. As long as the guys that are really contending for it in the top five are just... Having consistent runs, I think they're going to win it. I, Dad, I know you're that in I'm fourth. high up there, but yeah, you're am in I fourth. in fourth? Fourth. But that's with two drop rounds. Yeah, but you're still in fourth on 112 points, apparently. I don't know. I think there's too much of a gap. It might not be close enough. 
Well, Dan, I'm going to put positive thoughts out there, mate. You've taken the stage win. You're giving yourself 10, so that's a nice little bump. And then, obviously, if you can get the win as well, that'd be another bump. I, I think you've got this, Dan. Come on, don't put yourself down, dear sir. Uh, d yeah, you're right, you're right. I, I just thought... Just go out and win every race. It'll be all right. I, I should. You should. I, I'm just a little peeved right now. In well, the car, you know, the tensions go up. When well, I get out of the car, I'll feel a little better, but just a little frustrated. Well, listen, hope talking to me has calmed you down a little bit. Put a smile on your face, Dan. A little bit of a chuckle. You know, relax. We knew they were going to come. We knew it was a short trap. We knew there was going to be cautions. We knew there was going to be bat markers, Dan. Settle in. Have a good run to the end, buddy. And we'll talk to you down in Victory Road. Yes, sir. I'll try. Okay. Take care, mate. You too. See? I'm also a therapist for the drivers. There you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to keep them uh, yeah, all good and got, ticking and going forward. You got to keep them calm, these guys, didn't they? They're young. Well, everybody's younger than me, so it don't really matter. But they're young, you know, they're just all a little bit. As he said, he got a little bit aggy with the bat markers, but we knew it was going to come. We were on a short track. It was expected. Not everybody's as good as he is. You know, he's just got to relax, isn't he? And chill and go out there and now after this stage break into that guy go restart zone we are up and running we are green 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 once more here at richmond raceway dan michelle takes the whole shot he's leading as they're coming out of turn two dylan cortez clint Holman, alex witt and devon collicott your one two three four five as Witt is slowly losing out to devon who basically gave him a great effort to get past him as well as a little bit of pumping all the way through. Yeah, he's uh, it, kind of an interesting sort of, does, does, I guess, positioning that Wit has put him. Oh, uh, uh, oh, not sure who went around. The 20th in Russo. 27th? Russo? Hmm. Russo. Oh, I saw him up at the top there. Uh, I saw him in the wall. Um, so there he is. I'm a Russo. Caution number three. Obviously, two fours. He's gonna. Oh. That was an interesting oh. one. Yeah. Can't work out. I'm not sure if. Was that Carlson? Yes. Yeah, that's Hunter Carlson. Yeah, in the uh, the chrome gold. Did they see each other, or did we? Are we I don't talking, think they did. Or are we talking about that scenario that we were talking about with spotters not being able to give information? I think that was just more of a case of yeah, the spotters didn't realize because he's not alongside him, not alongside him, and then Hunter starts to go down, and all of a sudden he's alongside him. Mm. It was kind of a weird positioning. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna put that one up to a racing incident. I believe so as well. Billy, welcome in. Hey all. Go TJ and Brad, she said. Our boy TJ sitting in 13th at the moment. Young Mr. Bradley is sitting down in 25th place here. Down there, out in front again. I tell you what, let's have... We have a cannot go a week without chatting to the number 86 here. Well, Mr. TJ Spain. Now, TJ, you got me, buddy. Yeah, I can hear you. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. I hope you guys are. I'm doing very well, mate. Um, you're not sounding your jolly self, TJ. What's going on? Oh, I'm just focusing. <laughs> oh, in other words, shut up, James. I really didn't want to come and talk to you at this specific moment. Oh, no. No, man, you're good. Uh, it's all right, TJ. Well, I, I understand. You, you. Yeah, you know, I, I show you man love and, you know, part of my bro crow. And, um, well, there you go. I, I don't, can't win them all, I suppose. How are we looking out there, TJ? What are we expecting? uh i'm expecting a car that is not me to win this one um i'm doing my best out here but it is it's it's tough and there's good guys up at the front so we'll see how it goes well listen don't ever give up mate we've told you this before what's it doing out there at the moment with the car can you is it not working loose tight uh, what we got after a long run, which I'm very surprised we got, but grateful, after a long run, it really slows down. You have to uh, back up your braking points and uh, really just roll through these turns. Uh, there's not much, not much, 
crazy driving that can be done. Um, I fought uh, Seth there for a little bit, just trying to get around him, and it, it's so hard to pass somebody. Yeah. But uh, but it feels fine. It's it's a rhythm track. Um, anybody that's good on rhythm can can excel at this place. Okay, buddy. Well, we're three places off the top ten, mate. Come on. Hey, I'm gonna try and get there. I'll never not try. I know you won't ever not try, and I, I'm sure we will <laughs> get there. TJ, we will get there. We're, we're like the American Postal Service. It might take us five days, but we get there in the end. That's right. Go, bud. Well, have a good one, mate. Look forward to uh, seeing you at the end, dude. And, uh, yeah, go do it, mate. Top ten all the way. All right. You guys take care. And you, man. Can't go a week without talking to TJ, can we, in the number 86 <laughs> machine? Uh, got to love having a chat with him there as well. Um, it's weird, isn't it, really? We couldn't get, can't get the car working. Really slow after it, long runs. It's a tricky, it's a very tricky track because, yeah, you, you constantly have to sort of deal with the large amount of track evolution that's going to happen just due to tire degradation. So, like, as your tires start to go, they don't, your car gets, you know, it gets looser. It starts to drift more towards the wall. And as we've seen, um, uh, getting attached to the wall or too close to the wall doesn't usually end very well um so you want to try and avoid that as much as you can and if if your car is not really doing well with that it can cause problems there we go back up and racing once more down michelle takes a whole shot coming out of that guy go reese so once more clint holman dylan Chris, alex witt Devin Collicott, Brown and McClellan, Nicholas Stockner. We're running too wide at the moment. We are going to be settling one, uh, basically into a single file once more as Andrew Williams is given a little bit of Brown and McClellan, a little bit of a push. Stockner's on the inside, part of the Orange Wheel racing team. Uh, you can see just below the pitch, he's just about making out is Alex Witt side by side with Chris as they're heading round turn two now. Keeping this honest, I think this is the way we've got to go with this machine. Keep it honest, keep it going. TJ's down, well, he's up three for the day, down in 15th. So we've lost two places since the start there. And poor old Brad is down in 25th. He is currently, where is he? He is one lap down, is Bradley Young. So I'm sure he will keep going as much as it is. It's hard for Brad, isn't it? Maiden season, never really easy to come in on a maiden season. So we'll just have to keep an eye and see. As I'm sure we'll see improvements as the three seasons go on. Yeah, it'll definitely be, uh, it'll be fun to watch as kind of, you know, same if you follow, especially if you saw it, it'll follow the kind of the same growth uh, that TJ had. Because, I mean, I remember our first season when TJ first started and he was not struggling, but it was, you know, oh. coming to grips with uh, with how everybody drives and, and kind of how to drive this. So uh, it'll be interesting. Hopefully he's uh, able to do much of the same. Well, here we go. Caution number four. This is Anthony Radel. Okay, that's clearly not Anthony. Well, I believe that might be Trent and Kimmel in the 52. He's got Strider in front, he's going to get loose. He got loose on entry before he even went anywhere, didn't he? Yep. So, and then Radel, oh, he gets a knot from Peggles, a knot from Radel, and Kimmel, unfortunately, loose on entry. You could already see his back end going round. There was no way he was going to hold on. To I don't think that's Peg of. that hits him. You know what I mean? It was Peg, Peg didn't hit him. It was a, it was a purple car, but not, not Seth. Um, oh, who's that car? Will you, uh, uh, Burrell. Yes, that's who it was, yeah. There. Yeah, that one. The purple with the orange. Yeah, Burrell. 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 Burrell? Burrell. Burrell? Sure. Burrell. Why not? As Andrew Burrell? 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 Yeah, as Norbert gets... Let's call him Andrew. Andrew, yeah. <laughs> Norbert gets the lucky dog. Where is... Arm and Bruso were hiding from me. Oh no, he's in the BSPS room. Let's have a chat here with Mr. Arm and Bruso, the leader, the entrepreneur, the bus man himself, the man who is here with his finger on the yellow flags. Mr. Arm and Bruso. Arm and welcome here, buddy. How are you? I'm okay. How are you tonight? I'm very well, mate. Uh, we're four cautions in, um, which, to be fair, isn't bad considering we're on lap 66. What's the plans for you, dear sir? Where are you? 
wanting to put yourself? Uh, I mean, I I just want to finish this race on lead lap, so I'm just trying to stay alive to get there. That's, that's my only goal. Lap down at the moment, no? Yeah, well, I'm failing at my goal. <laughs> Story of my life, huh? Oh, <laughs> give over. Jeez whiz, <laughs> Batman. But, I mean, I figured Dan brought in the negative vibes. I might as well stick with the negative vibes. No, I, I had to big Dan. I had to tell him to get out there and be positive. He was like, no, I'm not going to win. I was like, just get on with it. You go and win and do it. Come on, Armin. What's, you know, you can't sit there saying that when you put together the league that I get the pleasure of talking about every Tuesday evening. I feel like I would hate myself if I was you. I don't. A, are you sure you love this place, or do you just love Terry? I, I, I love. It. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I love commentating on it. I look forward to my I know you do. days. I do. I missed we, my we, off season. We got you hooked on NASCAR. Or something. Yeah, well, now I'm driving trucks, so yeah, uh, definitely yeah. have done. Listen, though, um, I, the only thing is. You didn't do the one thing I wanted that took us to Monza. Um, that was the only thing you didn't do for me this season. Got, well, you uh, did say you wanted Martinsville, though. I did I give know, you that. You did. I did. I'm looking for But can you just do me one favor? Can you take out that silly rule that says nobody can chastain it around the ball? Um, no can. And it says... Um, why? I can't give you everything. I was... I want my whole cake and eat it. I don't. I just don't no, want to. You, I just don't want a you, slice. You, you get one slice of cake. You don't get the whole cake. All right, fine, fair enough then. At least I've got Martinsville. That would do for me. But listen, dude, you're about to go green. I'll put you back in your room. Have a good one, mate. And I'll catch up with you at the end. Much appreciate. Have a good night. Such an informative chat with Armand Bruso there, didn't we, really? We just talked about me getting my cake and eating it. But once more, we're going to be up and running into the guy. Go restart zone. We go. Damajal leads us away. Is he going to jump? He has jumped. He's leaving it until the last line every single time. And I'm not even in the car, and I can pick up that he's leaving it until the last line every single time he wants to go. He is leaving it to the very last point of O out of the guy Co before he runs here, Canton, and he's done it for the last four cautions. Yeah, it's it's kind of been ridiculous. He, he's getting great jumps, nothing crazy. Like he's not getting a you know a two you know a second lead super instantly, but he oh. Really? Well then. <laughs> German. Oh man. Oh man. That's wit. That is wit. Like wit cause? Let's see here. No, there was a check oh, up no, in front. That's not wit. <laughs> yeah, that was. That wit was is unfortunately it. connected into it, but I was like, wit's causing something. That's. Did you see that check up? That was a I did. massive. Who was that? I don't know. I'm gonna have to go backwards. I do apologize. It's just think that we're in reverse here. I think that it gets a bump from the s seven. It's Noel. It's Noel. Yeah. Oh, the twenty three is already in the wall. Yeah, if you go a little further back, I think it's actually who's in the sixty-five. Is that uh, Jamalin? Who's in the Craigslist car? Uh, oh, goodness, oh that's he's... what twenty-three. Yeah, the twenty-three car. Uh... Cody Kern. Cody Kern. Yeah. Kern gets a knock from Jackowitz, doesn't he, on the entrance there? Oh, he hits a wall. Oh, he clipped that inside wall, too. Oh, Cody Kern. That's harsh. Bumped into the corner. And you see Seth's in the mix. The 24's in there as well. Gregory Sherman. So that one incident is affected by Cody Kern, Seth Pegg, Greg Sherman, Alex Witt. All got caught up in some shape or form in that incident on lap 74 so a bit of a tough one but these guys was it 74 i think 73 actually on lap 73. so we're at the five caution mark here guys so if you've got minus five well you better hope they don't have any more and if you've got plus five you're on for a winner winner chicken dinner and mind you what do you win absolutely nothing 
Just the pride of saying you guessed correctly. Which is, uh, yeah, go me. Go you. That's, that's, that's three straight weeks. <laughs> exactly. I guess. Yeah. You don't win anything else. You, you, you just, just the privilege of, of saying that you got it right. Yeah, crisp high five. Huh? A crisp high five. Oh, yes. Sorry. I, 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 you said it so quickly. I thought you said a crisp. As in crisp. You know, or chip oh. or whatever you call it. I don't know. You I just get like, some chips. Yeah, you throw them at American you. chips? <laughs> yeah. Throw five of them at me or something. <laughs> a crisp five. No. Yeah, you get a crisp five. Yeah, not a... No. Not a... Uh, not the um, the UK version of crisps, which are just fries. No, fries are chips. Fries are chips, crisps right, are yes, crisps. Right, yes, sorry. Right, yes. We got skinny fries, we got curly fries, we got fat fries, we got sweet potato fries, we've got some manky fries. I can't even think what they were made of, but they were disgusting. Uh, I don't even think it was sweet potato. potato. I, I don't even know. They weren't, they weren't anything. But, but it says it had potato in it, Ken, but I'm not quite sure where the potato was. Or where it come from at one point, so it, they weren't the greatest. But our chips, our crisps, are a lot nicer. That's fair. I will stand on this, and I'm probably going to have an unpopular opinion on this. But uh, sweet potato fries are the worst thing ever made. Oh, they are atrocious. I hate them. Oh, not if you oven stick them on a tray with baking uh, paper, season them with salt, pepper, and a little bit of paprika. Give them an old good old mix up, mate, and cook them for about 20 minutes on 180. Um, and, and then put them right in the garbage because they're gross. Sweet potatoes are the worst thing ever. I don't like sweet potato fries. I just don't like sweet potato anything. No. It's just no. No, no. Well, guys, to say your goodbyes to Kent on this will be the last <laughs> week and be up here in the JPB booth with Dan Michelle <laughs> up on the run once more. Lab 79. <laughs> It's well, it's green. been real. I'll catch you all next time. Yeah. <laughs> it's green, green, green. <laughs> <laughs> and off we go. Oh. Dan Michelle, Ari Frank, Carter, Chris, Collicott, McLaughlin, Stotner. The old Jaguars continue to fight out. Holman's in there. TJ is now inside the top 10. Go TJ Spain Hour. We are in eight from the fast, angry racing team or an acronym of fart, if you want to be polite about it. But we're on lap 80. TJ's got 40 to go. Can he hold on on this longer run that he really, really needs? But he's got to make sure he stays with the guys in and around him. That is Jamal in the 65. Olmquist in the 17 I am machine. So, yeah, very interesting. Oh, Andrew. Check up there. Oh, Actually, mate. Oh. No. G yep, there it is. There we go. What is? Hey, Alex Wick got caught in that one again. <sighs> also, I now know what I'm going to run as my livery. It's just going to be a giant orange potato chip R with a massive X through it. Oh. And it'll be the unsweet potato. Nice. I do like that. Um, <laughs> right, lap eight. One, and it started with a tap on Norberg's back end, I'm afraid, from the ever-recovering 17. He goes out there, yeah. Andrew Onquist spins Oh, actually, I don't think he actually made contact. That looked like that might have been some net oh, code. It, look at oh, look it would have been. Sheesh. Yeah, there was a lot of contact after, but I honestly, I think that was actually net code. Do you reckon? I think it was, it's real close. So Armquist is in the 17. He's already got loose once coming out of the uh, off the back end of Strada in the 29. Close, Mr. TJ. Oh, uh, yeah, he was. He was going to make contact, but I think it was actually caused by Netcode and then checks up and unfortunately right into Andrew Weird. Williams, who then sends him into wit and then. That Everyone. unfortunately this, sends everybody this, into the wall. Yeah, this happens. William then decides that he's going to hit Wit again. Um, I don't think at all that was on purpose. Unfortunately, he was just part and parcel of the ever evolution of the accident there. Quite big words for me at this time of the, the, the morning. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Matthew Norberg, Onquist, Wit, Kern, Taylor, 
all involved in that incident once more. So there we go. Um, and at the moment, TJ's made it through, still sitting in eighth place. Go, TJ. You could talk, Kenton, if you will. I'm just... Well, we had a really good first run. Well, second run, I we guess. Did. We had a very early caution. But, like, what happened? We what went, happened to that? Can we, go, can we go back to that? Yeah, we went from lap three to stage break at 50. Um, and now we seem to be having a um, little bit of a ta 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 situation. Where is there's, there's the car? Is the lights going off this time around? Because if not, I'm going to have a chat with somebody. No, they're not. Right, let's right. Who do I want? I oh, know. Let's get hold of you. I'm going to chat with you for a little while. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a chat with the Twitch machine this evening. One, well, Mr. Seth Pegg. Seth, welcome in, buddy. G'day. How's it going, fellas? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Oh, living the dream back here. Living the dream. Just happy to be here. Hey, mate, you're in the top 15. Don't knock it. That's big. That's big. That's big. That's better than I was last week, at least. So. Mm -hmm. You're right. But going forward, how, are we gonna, how far are you going to get? I mean, I've I've got some new rubber on. I've fueled to the end. I think without cautions, which there's probably going to be a few more of them, eh? Um, without cautions, there are going to be people ahead who need to pit or fuel save, but I'm not particularly good at these sorts of tracks. This is definitely not my strength. I haven't done a lot of this racing. I'm, I'm only really used to, like, your longer ovals where you're more on the throttle and lifting, not really braking. So this is a different experience for me. But the position we have ourselves in is pretty good uh, right now, at least. Okay, Seth, so quick shout out for the Twitch channel. Go. Uh, Peggles underscore underscore. Watch me when I'm streaming. Let's yeah. get ready to race. There you go, Peg. Have a good one, bud. Catch up with you soon. You too. See you. There you go. Oh, sorry, Seth. Um, <laughs> if you're watching it, I'll cut you off. Uh, but right, we're going to get back up and running it again. Is Dan Michelle doing the same thing? He has. Right to the end of the Geico restart zone, and nobody seems to be able to respond whatsoever to him here. He just gets the jump. He's not as far as he was. Chris is heading up there. He's heading up into Collicott. Oh, yowzers. As Collicott took his nose off now, he's coming back on the side here as well. Stop there. Brandon McLaughlin, where are you going? Wherever you're going, please come back here. Um, oh, caution. Yeah, I was like, well, I think we went caution there. Ooh, Radle. that was, yeah. That went well. I think he kind of just cuts down on him. I, I, I don't know who he hit. Uh, he hit someone. Sorry, I'm going to have to go back again because there was, there was contact before that. Oh, is it Nordberg that's kind of bumps him here, eh? Yeah, Nordberg in the 76 machine, I think, may have something to do with this. Just saying, precautionary, put in that. Oh, no. There. No, he actually gets loose beforehand. And, and then, then Nordberg's kind of just unfortunately there. Wits. Actually, no, he did. You did guarantee no. Alex Witz thinking, please, not again. Yeah, and then he makes contact, and I don't know what car that is because it keeps Bruso. disappearing on me. Bruso? Okay. It, keeps, it just kept falling disappearing on me. I was like, I have no idea who this car this is. Yeah, um, Bruso comes down and unfortunately gets a piece of it there um, again. So I would have a chat with Alex Whip. I'm really not quite sure what moods he's <laughs> going to be in. So I'm going to go after. No. Yeah, I'm going to go after one Mr. Dylan Critz here. We're we'll bringing Dylan in the 34 machine. Dylan, welcome in. Can you hear me okay? I got you loud and clear. How's it going out there, sir? Oh, a little slidey, a little fuel savey. Um, it's, it's slick out there. I'm struggling for grip. Okay, find yourself in second at the moment. Let me give you a hint, okay? Third? Third. I just got uh, passed by Devin. He threw a really good slider in two. Oh, he did block you going against the wall. Right, let me give you a hint. When you go into that Geico restart zone, Dan Michelle starts every single time on the furthest line possible he's allowed to go. Okay? Just as a He's hit. stealing my tricks. 
Well, I'm just telling you as some advice. When he goes, he goes at the end of the Geico restart zone every single time. All right. So as a hint, tuck up behind him and just where you've gone past now, he'll go. All right. Okay. All right. Noted. Good. I'm going to win this race now. I hope you do, because when you come in, you can say thank you, James, for your hints. You helped me. Absolutely. I'll even share the prize pool with you. Dylan, there isn't a prize pool. <laughs> is, there a huh? prize, is there a prize pool? What? Well, now, why am I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Why am I here? Nobody's giving me money. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, you guys my are getting early paid? Rate. Is, are they getting what? paid? Can Apparently I... not! <laughs> we might have to have another chat with Bruso. Hmm. Yeah, well, how about you send me down? I'll go talk with him right now. <laughs> well, I will put you in, <laughs> back, back in there, bud. But what do you think, mate? It's going to be tough out there, right? We're going to see probably at least one more caution. What do we think the chances are of putting you in victory lane? Uh, I would say... There's a 20% chance. Depends if we can get a green flag run and get some lappers in the mix. All right. Well, listen, I'll pop you back in the room, although I cannot remember what room I got you out of. Was it in BSPS? That is correct. Good, sir. I'm going to put you back down there. Have a good one. Have a go at Armand about the uh, prize money. See you later. All right. See you. I will. <laughs> is there prize money? I have not, not that I'd heard, but oh, if there is, hey, I'll get, I I'm, want some. Yeah, I'm getting my car out. Of, I'll tell you that much. Right, mm -hmm. here we go again. Chris, is he going to learn once more here? Be behind, tucking him up. He's gone again. There you go. There you go, Dylan. Take the inside line. Get that second place here as Damashell got the jump. Davin Collicott couldn't answer. Chris has got the inside line running out of turn two at the moment. Is he going to be able to hold this? Get up inside, Collicott. He's got loose. Oh, Dylan. Hold it. To be honest, he was probably better off spinning it and getting a caution, but he held it there as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah at least he's still going forward. Yeah, at least he's still going forward. However, down in eighth place. TJ there in front in the FART in the Busby B sitting in sixth, seventh, fifth place at the moment. Go TJ. There's he's got his top four or five. What do you want? Top ten. He's got his top ten at the moment. Collicott's got the jump on Michael. He's pushed Michael out that outside line. Hartman also coming in as they're coming into turn two, into turn one. And at the moment, Michel is struggling on that outside line there. Kenan is being pushed out a little bit here. Yeah, it's uh, not the best spot, but at the same time might help him be able to kind of save those tires a little bit. Obviously, we've got 25 laps to go, so he's got a, a good chance of really trying to push those, I think. They're going to kind of hope for another safety car and come in, get some new tires and things like that. And so maybe a splash of fuel, but it's going to be a little tricky being on that outside line. Um, if you start drifting, it looks like Collicott's having a little bit of a harder time trying to control the speed because he just he doesn't seem to have the exit that Dan does uh, coming out of there. And Dan's going to come it. down on him. He's gonna yeah. All day. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't hold that outside line. Dan was going to come down on him straight away. Almost Collicott tries to block out Hartman there. Doesn't quite make it through currently. Hartman's running out in that 22 and there's a contact at the back with Jason Taylor and Terry Murphy. What has gone on here? Murphy in the red. White gets loose into Taylor. Sends it all off. Oh! Jackowitz Peggles! No! Oh my dearie me! That's not how to take that corner. Well, that happened. That, yeah, it seems to be uh, a thing. Yeah, but it all started here, though, with Terry, didn't he? He just got well loose coming out of the corner. And unfortunately, he um, led himself into his own downfall. He starts coming out there. You can see the snap. He goes to the, the back end, goes to the right. The front wants to go left. He goes in. And then, unfortunately, Noel Jackowitz tries to avoid him. He puts tail around. Peggles is there. He's got nowhere to go in that purple machine. We've got Joshua Kuhn coming around. He goes into Jackowitz as well. Seth then goes in to... Who is that in the 71 machine? Omquist. Omquist in the 17. I think 17. that's the 17. Yep. Yeah. Oh, backing up. Oh, my God. He backed up on him. 
Why? Yeah, that's gonna be, um... Why would that. you do this? He just rolls back. No breaks, nothing. Stopner's in there. Bruso's in there. Brad, unfortunately, gets caught up as well. He's just heading in and... Um, why would he back up, dear Kenan? Um, for you. legal reasons, I cannot say. <laughs> for legal reasons. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that was... Well, that's put Taylor... Let's, let's just go with... It wasn't the smartest of moves. No, it wasn't. Let's, definitely let's go not. with that. I agree. Uh, let's put Taylor, Young, Armquist, Keith, Bruso, Murphy, Williams all in the pits. Seth's in the top 16. Stockner is in 17th behind him with Greg Sherman in 18th. But unfortunately, that was not a good move. Chris has got himself back up into 5th after coming um, a little bit slidey with McLaughlin, Collicott, Holtman, and Dan Michelle out in front. Um, yeah, Terry Murphy, penalty incoming, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, just a little one. Just a little one. Just a, just a little one. I, I feel there might be a penalty coming in and coming for him as well, to be honest, because that was just... Um, or at very least, it'll be a stern talking to. But yeah, that's. Uh, Are you saying he's going to be a? Hold your uh, it's going to be a Bruso windmill coming at him. Do you reckon? Uh, I got a feeling Bruso gained at least three gray hairs in that situation just uh, by himself. How? Uh, yeah, Bruso and his gray hairs. Good blimey, he's probably got half an head by now. Surely, he's got her, haven't he? Yeah. Well, there we go. I at minimum, yeah. Minimum, yes. I do fully agree here, and uh, we are on. Caution number eight. I thought we were doing so well when we broke the um, the twenty-five to go. Not think. Yeah, I <laughs> wish, wish wishful thinking. I guess. Oh um, come on, get him! We've got to be optimistic about it all. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we made it. We just need one more, really. I just need one more caution, and then my prediction at the beginning of the race is correct. Yeah, you did go with nine. And to be fair, we are on eight, so maybe we will here as well. Uh, Chris has got... Actually, technically, I get two more, because either I'm one more and we hit nine exactly, or I get two more and I hit nine forced cautions. Right, okay, well, let's see what goes on once more. Michelle's going to go at the end of the Geico restart zone once again. He's done the same thing. Now, how are they not reading this? I do not understand this whatsoever. Dan Michelle goes again and again and again right at the end. Chris got the jump over Brandon McLaughlin, who's blinking around just a little bit. Chris is going to be looking now, trying to gain some of these places back. He's got Hartman in front of him in that white 22 machine. Devon Collicott, but it is Dan Michelle taking a whole shot, going over the 17 to go here of the 120. Hi-ho, back to ovals we go. Let's see what goes on here, Ken. And what do we think? One more caution. I, I mean... For my estimates, I would love one. Well, you might but get one because Seth is dropping places like an absolute trooper at the moment. He's now... Yeah, he looks a little squirrely there. Yeah. That front end looks... Uh, I know his front end earlier looked like it took some damage. I don't know if he finally hopped in and got that fixed, but uh, it looks a little dicey coming through those corners. Yeah, we know TJ's getting a very dicey car. Alex Witt's sitting in the top eight at the moment. He's going to be spitting bubbles. He's been caught in incidents that he just wasn't even a part of. There, but unfortunately for him, 16 to go now as well. We've just gone over the line, 15. Now, Michelle, are we going to get this clean run right to the end out of these 15? Kenan, what do we reckon? Um, Optimistically, yes. I'm going to say probably not based on there's a crash in the back straight right now. <laughs> I just saw the numbers drop and I was like, oh, there we go. No, no, I, I. Uh, I think it was in, they were in 15, 16th-ish area. I don't know what it was, but I just saw two cars going very, very slowly. I don't know who it was then. I heard, yeah, crash.
No, it doesn't look like it was him. Oh. Looks like he got a little loose and... Yeah, I have no idea why the... Oh, there it is. Yeah, I was just going to say, actually, looks like that 124 car was uh, a little slow, too. Yeah, he hit the wall. Okay. Yeah, he seems to have moments once or twice. Keep out of the way of that one. Um, as I've just realized my microphone was turned off, I do deeply apologize there. I did sneeze at one point and did mute it. So that could explain that one. But now we're back here again. 12 to go. Once more. Who's going to come and get it? Who's going to get it? Who's not going to get it? We'll find out very, very shortly. Uh, Peggles, low. That's always put. I do deeply apologize, Peggles. I cut you off earlier. In Sorry, there, sir. But you are well. Don't forget to go Peg follow Peggles on Twitch. Peggles double underscore. Peggles, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember what he said. Peggles it double is, underscore, yeah? Yeah, Peggles un double underscore. His logo's fantastic. It's Peggles, but it, the, the two Gs are a five and a nine, which is his number. There he is, Peggles double underscore. Go and follow him on Twitch if you have a Twitch channel. Um, I don't actually think I've used the channel forever, so... I probably wouldn't be much use to you, dear sir, whatsoever. But we've got 11 to go. Caution on 106 here. TJ, top nine. Go, Mr. Spain Hour. As we're settling in now here. Alex Witt just in front of TJ at the moment. Not bad somebody person to follow. Yeah, he, he might know what he's doing. Just a little bit. Sitting at 4K, I should hope so. He's the highest one in the field. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I finally got my, well, my formula car uh, I rating up over 900 uh, or over a thousand now. I'm uh, almost I'm close on my ovals after I'm having to replenish it from my son thinking it was a good idea going dirt ovals before they split the licenses. Um, well, let's say he didn't do too well. So we're almost back. I'm always going back over 900 again. Um, after nice. my week on the trucks, of course, not a Kota. I probably should have ran Kota. I wasn't too far off the pace. I was like a second or so off the f pace of the top split. But here we go now into the restart zone right at the end. And we are green. And Holtman hasn't picked up on it. And Collicott hasn't picked up it. And Damichel running away with it. Once again, taking that whole shot into one. Coming out of two now. This front end group. Norberg is looking a little bit slidey on earlier on. McClutland's looking a little bit uncomfortable here again. I've not seen anything from Strada. Holtman's taken the lead. Currently running with Dan Michelle. Ran that outside line as we go into the last eight here. Kenton, about what we were talking about in the green room yeah it's uh, uh there's a little bump ski and there goes dan and there goes everybody else just a solid checkup though that's we can survive that right um but that's uh that's rather unfortunate for dan he goes from first to fifth very quickly um and not a lot of time to try and make that back up fortunately oh Oh, it looks like there's some... What? what? I don't know why. It looks like it's on... It was on the corner. Seth. Oh, Seth got a little squirrely and... Uh, that can't contact. be it. No, 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 no. Surely not. Fair enough. I'm a little bit lost on that one. There it is. Ah, uh, yes. Whose name am I writing down? 
Oh, that looks like Radel. Uh, and what is that 52? Is that Kimmel? Trent Ki Trenton Kimmel. Who does have apparently a quick text button on his wheel to say arm and hit the uh-oh button. Which is hilarious, and I love it. It was my fault. See, pales, man. That's what happens when you're fans of St. Kilda. It's always your problem. Why was it your fault? Issues. I don't understand why that was your fault, Seth. I think he got loose and checked up, and it caused another checkup. I think it's before this. There. Ah, uh, yeah, he makes contact. No, that's... But he does make contact with 78, it looked like, but I don't know how that caused... Trent and Kimmel, who was behind him. Crits back into third, Strada fourth, Michael fifth, Witt sixth, Norberg seventh, Jackowitz eighth, Jamal and TJ in ninth. Still surviving the top ten at the moment with Christian Strada in there. Is anybody going to jump on the fact that Dan Michel, who is not in the top five this time, uh, is not leading, so he can't jump at 